transformers. They come in all shapes and sizes. From great big chonking auto transformers like this one and even bigger, to tiny little transformers like this. Transformers can have a lot of purposes. Transformers that step voltages down. Transformers that step voltages up. Transformers that isolate one signal from another, but don't change the voltage. Auto transformers that do change the voltage, but don't provide any isolation. And basically everything in between. I should point out that some transformers can even be used the other way around. These are step down transformers, that you could also use as step up transformers, just so long as you don't exceed the voltages. But most step up transformers, you cannot use as step down transformers. Apart from maybe the microwave oven transformer, but that doesn't actually work too well. I know, because I've tried it. So, I'm having a problem with my computer's audio. And that problem is, there is a lot of background noise, and I believe this is due to a ground loop. Now, I know that you cannot hear anything at the moment. If I turn the volume all the way up, you might be able to hear something. A little bit closer in, you might be able to hear that. And that's not just present there. This tape recorder, which I've also got connected up to the computer. And this is what I use to record my dialogue for my upcoming show, and a few other things from the computer. I have the headphone output connected up to a pair of speakers. And just listen to what happens when I turn this up. There is that noise again. Let's have a look at how this is all wired up. So, we've got the computer, a camera, a microphone, cassette deck, mixer, amplifier and speaker. Actually, it's no one of the computer looks so angry. Connected up to all that stuff. And I've drawn in all of the ground connections. Now you can see here, from the computer to the camera, that's fine. From the computer to the microphone, that's fine. From the computer to the AC outlet, that's fine. But when we get over here, you can see there are problems. So, if we take a look at the ground connection going through the tape recorder, you can see that the computer's output goes into the tape deck, then comes out, and back into the computer. So we've got one ground loop there. Another place we've got a ground loop is at the mixer. Because I've got two audio outputs from my computer. One has volume normalization on it and the other one doesn't. So I have some software set up so it goes out through the audio normalization, normalized output. That's useful for things like YouTube and video games and films and stuff. The other one which doesn't have audio normalization, that's what I use for music and stuff like that. The point is, there are two line outputs and you can see we've got a ground loop. So the only way I've been able to get rid of this noise is to lift some of the grounds. So I'm going to pull this one out so it's only connected via the signal. And I'm going to do the same to this one as well, so the grounds are not connected. And as you can hear, the noise is gone. But it's not eliminated entirely. And now I have insufficient grounding elsewhere. If I turn the volume up now, right channel is still okay, but on the left channel, something's buzzing here, something's buzzing like mad. And I think the meter confirms that. And that's where these come in. So these are audio isolation transformers. And I can put these in line on the inputs and outputs. Now, I've got 10 of those, but I'm only going to need 6. And I think if I put an isolation transformer here and here on the two outputs, and also put one here on the computer's line input, that should be just fine. I'm reshooting this part because last time I did it, I made a complete cock-up of it, like I always do. So anyway, I thought that before I do 
anything with these transformers. I thought I'd better check to see how well they work. I mean, after all, I don't want to put these into my audio setup and then find out that they were no good. So, what I want to do is I want to test the low frequency response of the transformers. Now, I've got one hooked up to my scope here. As you can see with this very messy wiring job. So, the blue trace on the scope is measuring what's going into the transformer and the yellow trace is measuring what's coming out of the transformer and I really should be looking through the camera's viewfinder to see what the camera's actually pointed at before I actually point to something. Now, trouble is here, I don't have a function generator apart from this RF one which is going to be no good for this experiment but what I do have is Open Mod Plug Tracker, which has OPL, so I can do a pure sine wave output on that, and we'll see what we get. I agree that a computer's not the best thing to use as a function generator, but, um, I just have to make do. Right, so I'm going to play a few C notes into this. I'm going to start with 523 Hz, and let's see how well the transformer handles that. And Okay, that seems to be coming out good. There is a little tiny bit of a loss there, but I expected that. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. All right, I'm going to go down to 261. See, I want to see how good the low frequency response of these transformers is. If it can go down to 100 hertz without, you know, any trouble, it's going to be just fine. Because I don't listen to bass heavy music, unlike a certain neighbor of mine did. So, 261 hertz, which seems to be a bit louder, but I think that's just the computer being the computer. I've just noticed that the uh, output waveform is inverted, so I'll have to keep that in mind. Alright, 130 hertz. That's even stronger. Yeah, I see how that's good. And now 65 hertz, which by a staggering coincidence was the only note that a certain neighbor's music of mine was made from. And I had to put up with that every single day. I'm glad he's gone though. The other noisy neighbor's still there though. Alright, that seems to be coming through pretty good. Right, so these transformers appear to work well. So what I want to do is, I want to put the transformers into a shielded metal box. I'm going to have to connect one of the grounds to the casing of the box, which I've drawn here in the dotted line. And because the wires going to the computer are both going to the same ground, all I need to do is connect one of the grounds to the outer casing and the box will be shielded. If you're wondering what all this means, well, this ring represents the outer conductor of the wire, and this other bit represents the inner conductor. Okay, so it took a while to find a good metal box to use. In the end, I found one of my old pencil cases, which I'm going to use because it's metal. I've mounted the transformers onto some prototyping board, and the reason we've got six here is because, well, we've got left and right input to the computer, left and right output of line one, and left and right output of line two. I have one charged battery and another fully charged battery in the camera. And also, started wiring up the transformers. And I checked for continuity. And we have about 140 ohms between each uh, signal wire and ground. Got to remember that's DC resistance, the AC resistance of these transformers is going to be much higher than that. So these are for the computer's left and right line inputs. And these ones are going to be for the computer's left and right line outputs. Now just outputs as plural because my computer has two line outputs. Okay, well here it is, all wired up. You may have noticed that I've put thick tape on the inside so it doesn't short so none of these wires short out on the metal also i've added a grounding to the case 
and my words are failing me, but, um, stuff. And here it is, closed up. I know it looks like it's been through a lot, and it has, but, um... And yes, I know it's got Bart Simpson on it, but I don't think that's gonna matter. As long as it does its job, that's all that matters. This must be like the 50,000th take I've taken of shooting this, because every time I start the camera recording, my brain just melts. But anyway, it is now done and connected to the computer, and I have to say, it works. The noise is now gone. Well, for the most part, anyway, there is still one small little problem which I just cannot wrap my head around. I don't know what's doing it. Now, I used to have to take a lot of steps in order to make a clean recording onto the tape. I had to make sure that this was not on, because this would cause that weird noise to get into the recording. Now though, even when I have this on, I get a clean, noiseless recording onto the tape. However, it's now affecting playback. So, like you know, as I mentioned before, I have a couple of speakers connected up to the headphone output on this. And you might be wondering just how I'm doing that without nothing connected to the headphone output. Well, I need to replace the socket and uh, I've just temporarily wired the speakers directly into the tape recorder's headphone amplifier. Which are right here. So there's one there and one there. If I put the camera right up close, you can still hear we're getting that sound. But here's the weird thing. Right? So, this is the output, okay? The output. And the only speakers I've got on at the moment are the ones that are connected to this tape recorder. Right? If I unplug the output, so it's not connected to the computer. And bear in mind, it's connected to the computer via a transformer. That's what these wires are going to. They're going to a transformer, which then goes to the computer's line input. Disconnected. The noise is gone. I'll reconnect it. I'll just connect it so only the signal part of the connection is connected. Right, so none of the grounds are connected, so we know it's not a ground loop. The noise is back. Alright, so I'll plug that in anyway. Now this is only affecting playback. It's not affecting recording. Because I made a recording with this and with that weird noise in the background and it was not getting onto the tape. However, if I close this sound settings. Now the noise is gone. And that's a complete mystery. But anyway, I can now ensure that when I record onto the tape and when I play it back, there won't be any noise in the background that I'll have to deal with. So apart from that one little mystery that I just cannot work out, I'm going to say that this has been a 100% success. And another good thing about this is because we've got isolation through... Let me see if I can open it here. Through all these transformers. Should anything happen to the computer, you know, should anything bad happen, like some high voltage gets into the audio wires or anything, Transformers will take care of that. It's not going to blow up the computer's audio. Because that's happened to me before. So, yeah, it's a lot safer as well this way. Anyway, I'm going to sign off by saying it has not affected the sound quality negatively anyway. The sound levels are just a teeny weeny weeny bit lower than what they used to be, but that's 
nothing really. So anyway, I'm going to call this a success, and until next time, goodbye.